while since we've been under this thing. Right, that thing covered up beautifully. All right, well, we're in the shop today, and today we have my daily driver in here. Now, I did not intend to modify this car at all when I switched to the dark side and got myself a newer sports car daily. I said I was gonna keep this thing 100% bone stock. And that changed slightly. We did an exhaust, we did some suspension arms, but today it's changing dramatically. We are doing a metric ton of upgrades to this thing. I've been saving up parts and collecting stuff I wanted to do and we're gonna be doing it all. It's gonna be a pretty massive transformation. I'm excited. I absolutely love this car. It is probably the best car I've ever owned. It does everything well, it's fun, it's, it's, it's a good car and we're taking it to the Dragon again here soon. So I wanted to get all this stuff knocked out so it is A1 for the trip. So let me show you what we got. We have literally an entire tabletop full of boxes. We have some really, really baller stuff for this thing. This is the nicest stuff I've ever got for a car, nicest car parts. I have already peeked in these AMS boxes. I haven't opened this one, but I have seen what's inside. I couldn't help myself and I was blown away. <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing uh, upgrades like this on a car like this, but here we are and we're doing it. So. I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering. Let's get this stuff unboxed. I'll show you what we got and uh, we'll get to work. We gotta tear this, pretty much this whole thing apart. So we're familiar with it now from the drift one. We got this, right? We're, we're BMW mechanics at this point. We're F80 mechanics. Uh, all right, let's get, uh, let's get this stuff unboxed. All right, we're not gonna unbox everything because then we gotta store it places. But I've gotta show you what's in these boxes. We still have other stuff to do, but this is just everything we can fit on the table. Uh, so this is from AMS Performance. I've known about AMS Performance for a very long time. I never thought I'd be putting their very, very nice parts on my car. So what we have is their, oh, I gotta be careful here. Well, A, they're really nice packaging. Look at this packaging. Insanely nice packaging. We have their carbon <laughs> intake setup. It's all carbon intakes. I haven't opened this box yet. I've opened this one, but look at this. I don't know. The lid is magnetic. It's got a filter in here. It's all molded to fit perfectly in the factory location with snorkels going out to the grill. I mean, come on now. This, I, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I have these in my possession. So that's box one. Box two. So this is their charge pipe setup. So we've got the intake side, which we didn't even do on my other car. And we've got the hot side. Um, these are really, really nice, really high quality. They're wrinkled black. Um, so that's box two. And then we get to open box three together. And then we're gonna get to work, but we gotta give ourselves a little motivation by taking a sneak peek at this stuff again. I normally can resist uh, opening boxes of car parts, but when I got these in, I opened them immediately. And uh, I'm glad I did, because you got me hiding. This stuff is so nice. Oh, ho, 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 look at that. Dude, get in here, this way. Look at that. Dude, that is baller. Look at that. Look at this snorkel kit to get cold air. So that goes, I assume, like that and then into the air box. So it sucks up by the grills. So it's like the much nicer way of doing it than what we have on the, the drift one. The drift one's just some, some charge piping, basically, to some cone air filters. This is all carbon. Look, oh my, can you, are you seeing? I know video is not gonna do it justice, but that's just the start. Like I said, we've got a lot of parts. I've been collecting parts for months. For this thing and we're gonna do them all at once so it should be pretty pretty big old project so i'm gonna put jibber jabber in and we're gonna start tearing this thing apart all right so take a good look at the base stock we can do a little tour around so we have done nothing uh this car does have the crank hub fixed the pink crank hub is pinned and it's got down pipes and exhaust that is it at the moment um, but you can see our stock air box is here boom boom Carbon brace, stock intercooler, stock plastic charge piping. It's all stock under here. And that is about to change. So here's a little before. 
now it's time to tear it apart. Like I said, we, we've become pretty proficient in this. We've done it several times on the drift car when we were building it. So hopefully this shouldn't take us too long, but we've got to strip the whole front of the car apart. So it's a decent bit of work out of us. So these cars, like a lot of modern cars, have a ton of these plastic covers, but these cars take it a little bit further and they have a ton of added bracing. Now the bracing is what makes the chassis so stiff. Uh, these chassis are about as stiff as an E30 race car from back in the day, which is pretty impressive for a street car with no cage. But again, that comes at a cost of serviceability. Now, fortunately, as I mentioned, we have a lot of experience working on these things now, and that's really half the battle when it comes to working on cars. When you know what you need to take off to get to where, how that thing comes off, what you have to take off to take that thing off, it makes the process go a lot quicker. So stripping this thing down for me and Josue was really a pretty pretty quick and simple process all things considered because we've done it a bunch of times so we started ripping everything off the top and then the fender liners and then some of the skid plates on the bottom and then we were able to get the bumper off now one of the downsides of all these coolers and all these grill openings is you get a lot of junk in there a lot of dirt and a lot of debris especially when we're driving up in the mountains in the fall with all the leaves on the ground so this is a good opportunity for us to give this stuff a thorough clean out while we're in here so with all that off the bumper off all we need to do is pull the headlights out which we hadn't done on the other car so that's a new step we got to do on this car and then pull the bumper support off and the cross brace that goes in front of the heat exchanger off and the front end is officially stripped down all right well as promised we have the entire front end of this thing <laughs> torn apart this probably would have been a bit more intimidating if we hadn't just done you know 75 percent of this process on the drift one but it's not too bad a lot of brackets a lot of bolts a lot of clips a lot of brackets a lot of bolts <laughs> uh there's a lot of stuff but the last thing that needs to come off up here is the heat exchanger for our intercooler that is the last item up here and we've got a couple other things to take off and then disassembly is complete so we've kind of got to work backwards a lot of this we had to take off for installing the intakes but those are really the last thing that needs to go back on of all the upgrades we have so let me show you what uh the other stuff we have is it's all pretty exciting <laughs> All right, so thing number one is this Mishimoto intercooler setup. This is a paint match one, so it's the same color as the factory paint code, which I think is really cool. But aside from the performance benefits, the stock intercooler is just such an eyesore. I mean, it is the centerpiece of the engine bay when you open up the hood, and it's just, it's just ugly. <laughs> so having a nice shiny one when you pop open the hood, it just, it's nice, it's aesthetically pleasing. So to accompany that, we have their heat exchanger. This thing is so much larger than the stock one. It holds a lot more volume, a lot better cooling efficiency. So this is these two coupled together make a huge difference in your intake air temps. This cools the water down that's going into here and keeps your core cooler, which keeps your air cooler going into your engine, which helps your engine live a long and happy life. Hot intake air temps can lead to detonation and all sorts of other things. So we wanna keep those cool, especially when we're thrashing on this thing in the mountains. So to go with that, we have the AMS charge pipe kit. Really, really nice piece. I'm super stoked to try these on. All aluminum, no more plastic bits. And then another kind of oddball, doesn't really fit in, but fits into the situation, is this brake duct kit that we got. So this is going to replace our factory brake duct shield. Those are the bosses where it bolts on. It's literally the shape of the factory's dust shield, uh, but with a spot for this hose to hook onto, which is gonna go to the front bumper and draw air in from these inlets that kind of fit perfect in the front bumper, don't look too out of place. So that's going to allow us to basically force air to our rotors to keep our brakes cool. So that's the next section of parts we have to go on, but they kind of need to go on before we put everything back together with the intake. So we're gonna go ahead and get this heat exchanger out, get this inner core out, and quit your jabbering and get back to work. Doing the heat exchanger on this car is a little bit different than when we did it on the other car because there is an added cooler on this car for the DCT transmission. The other car has a regular six-speed manual, this car has a DCT, so there's another cooler in there that's kind of sandwiched between all these that you've got to hold in place while you get the lower bracket on. But all in all, it's a pretty easy swap. And then we need to get the intercooler off so we can start working on that. All right, now it is officially fully stripped down in the engine bay at least. So Sway's working on getting the brakes off for our brake dust shield, brake ducting situation. Heat exchanger is in. These things look so good. I love that they include this rock guard because as you could probably see by the stock one here, these things get chewed up. So before I put this stuff on, I just wanted to give you a side-by-side. -side. Mishimoto intercooler, stock intercooler. Mishimoto, stock. AMS charge pipes, stock charge pipes. AMS charge pipes, 
stock charge pipes. A1. So before we can put the intercooler on, we've got to swap over the bracketry and the reservoir tank. So the factory intercooler, pretty much everything's plastic. So it uses these like wood screws <laughs> this is what they look like. Very, very coarse thread screws. And the intercooler we're putting in is all aluminum. So we have fine thread metric M6 stuff. So it works out perfect. We get all the bolts swapped over. And before I can toss it on, I've got to put this intercooler charge pipe in. Now, this is a little different for me as well because I didn't do this charge pipe on the other car, this we still left the stock charge pipe here. So I've never installed this one before and it was definitely a little bit of a tight space to get in there, but we got that in and we were able to set the intercooler down on and already what a massive difference an intercooler makes on these cars. I mean, it is what's front and center. It's what you see when you open the hood of these and the, the stock one just is just, it's not very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm really glad to get this done. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So with the intercooler in, in place, the lines hooked back up we can go ahead and get our charge piping installed. Now these are a really snug fit with this noise cover that I also don't have on the other car. So it was a little bit tight to get them squeezed on there, but they fit perfect once I got them in place and got everything tightened down and snugged up. And then it was time to fill the system and check for leaks. So we're leaving the one hose off. So ideally air can bleed out of the cooler and allow us to get a better, a better initial bleed on this before we start it up and run it. So we've basically got the return hose disconnected. So hopefully the fresh water can push all the air out of the top of the system and we don't have to do as much bleeding later. All right, air cooler and charge piping are done. Both look beautiful in there. What a difference that makes. I can't wait to see it all buttoned up with the intake. So I filled the cooling system as much as possible. I used this vacuum bleeder that I got to try to vacuum bleed it. I don't think it's bled all the way still, but it took a little more. So it should give us a better chance of an easier time bleeding the rest of it with the car running. So to do that though, we need to get the rest of this thing assembled. We know it doesn't seem to have any leaks so we can move forward. Now we were going to start doing the brake duct stuff, routing the hose to go to the backing plate here. Hose went ahead and did some gold foil on here. However, this kit's not gonna work. It is a cheap kit, so I can't expect much, but it's kind of silly the way they did this. So this is the bumper duct. This is a GT4 replica bumper duct. And it is way too small for this giant hose, right? Which this giant hose is way too big to fit through where it needs to fit through for the bumper duct location. And the reason because, is because the factory GT4 car that's modeled after uses a small hose from there to one part of the backing plate and then a large hose from another lower duct to a different part of the backing plate. This is like a combo. It's the big opening on the backing plate with the small opening on the bumper. Now, I've got some ideas on how to make that work, but for right now, we're just gonna shelve it. Brake cooling isn't really a big deal at the Dragon. You're not driving at like the absolute limit. You're always leaving a a lot on the table. You're not pushing it super hard. It's really only a problem at an actual track day. So for now, we're gonna shelve it and uh, we'll come back to it. A whole lot of jibber jabber to say, it's finally time for the uh, PS de resistance, the AMS performance intakes. We've gotta basically start assembling these and assemble the rest of the car around them, right? Is that, is that sound about right, Jose? Does sound about right. Sound about right? So uh, yeah, time to uh, start putting this thing back together. What do we say, Jose? Enough jibber jabber. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. You're so close. I'll get it one day. One day. <laughs> so the first thing that needs to go back on is this X brace that goes in front of the heat exchanger. Now, this car was wrecked before I got it. It was wrecked at some point. Someone partially rebuilt it and then we got it, kind of finished fixing things and putting it back together, but we're constantly finding little issues and because the car was wrecked, it's not perfectly straight up here. There's certain things that are out of misalignment. So it's making our job a little bit more challenging. You know, we had to modify the X brace a little bit to get it to fit nicely. And we had to bend around some of the AC lines, but so far they're going in, fortunately, because these are built to a really tight tolerance. I mean, they are perfectly molded to fit in here and work their way around everything while maintaining the largest opening possible. So when things are out of whack, it makes that a little bit more difficult. But fortunately, we've got them test fitted. So now we can go ahead, put the front bumper back on and then work on the assembly. So the first piece is the snorkel section that goes under the core support. 
And then we've got the nostrils, as Osue calls them, to go in the grill, which he opened up and, and clearance to get them to go through. And then we can start putting the core support back on, the hood latches. You know, when you get into all of this stuff, you got to be careful because you need to make sure that everything lines back up. Otherwise, things aren't going to shut. Gaps aren't going to line up well. So we're taking our time here, using our diligence to make sure everything's fitted right and everything's bolted up as it should. They give you a lot of mounting spots for these so that they don't flop around when you're ripping on this thing. Just looks so cool. Like I said, I thought the uh, twin air filters in the grill look cool, but this is like a whole nother level of cool. What a nice kit, man. Just so impressed. I mean, I know AMS stuff's super nice, but like, you know, the tolerance is to make this all perfect. Very, very well done. Very well done. Once we were done staring at our half finished intake install, it was time to get back to work on putting this thing back together. We wanted to go ahead and get the headlights in and then we could move on to the engine bay stuff. We've got everything that needs to go on in the front and the, the intermediary with having the bumper off and the headlights off and all that stuff. So now it's time to do all the engine based stuff that required us to take that apart. So we've got a new intake pipe to go down to the back turbo as well as a new crossover pipe and then the two boxes. So the boxes fit into the factory rubber grommets where the factory air boxes went in. So super easy install. We basically just attach them to the snorkel part that goes through the core support get them in the rubber boxes, and then get them hooked up to the inlets going down to the turbo. Now, one thing I thought was really cool is they, they moved some things around. They moved the mass sensor port closer to the turbo, so it's presumably the same distance as the rear turbo one is. They also moved around some of the grommet and clamp positions, and all of that made everything a lot cleaner aesthetically, but also it makes more sense mechanically. So that's pretty neat. It's the little things. Boom. Look at that. Intakes installed. What a what a snazzy combo, man. I mean, you look at it from the bay and you've got the nice magnetic filter covers. So you can get in there to the filter, the box, to the snorkel. We got the nice carbon fiber intake pipe for the front turbo. And then just seeing the boxes there, the carbon pipe down here. What a what a combo. And then, you know, you look at all that, which is cool and all, but then the snorkel coming out to the big nostril, as Josue calls it, <laughs> breathing through the grill, like what a, oh man, stepping back and looking at it really, wow, dude, that is, that is sick. <laughs> I'm so glad we went this route. It just looks like OE, you know? So after staring at the completed intake this time for a little bit, it was time to hammer down on putting the car back together. Now, one thing we wanted to do before we fully reassembled this was pull the skid plate off and just clean it out. You know, we had some coolant spill from disassembling the intercooler system and we wanted to make sure we got all that off and got that cleaned up before we put this thing back together. So we went ahead and dropped it back down so we could get the front bumper on, get it in place. Luckily it goes on pretty easy even with the sensors. It's got a nice built-in harness setup and then with that back on we could put a new upgrade on this aluminum Turner Motorsport skid plate. So I actually got this for the other car uh, but that car actually already had one, so we saved it for this car. It's a really important upgrade for these. It protects the oil cooler. A lot of these cars have bent oil coolers because the plastic one isn't really going to do much if you smash into something. All right, well, the car is all the way put back together. We got all our undertrace stuff back on, including our new skid plate. Looking nice. You can see this gap we have now, this... This buffer zone <laughs> for when we inevitably smash this thing on the ground going probably too fast over <laughs> bumpy uneven roads. So I'm glad to get this on. I've been meaning to do it since before the first Dragon trip, but we finally got around to it better late than never. So all the rest of our little plastics and skid plates are back on, the main skid plate. It's all done and dusted. From bumpers back on, you can see the coolers peeking through the grill there. It's always so satisfying to see. And then especially the snorkels peeking through the front grill. You wouldn't even notice them if you didn't know what you were looking for, but when you know, you know, and it, it looks so sick. So anyway, now that it's back together, we still need to bleed the intercourse system by firing it up, but before we get there, we need to bleed the brakes. Uh, more importantly, replace the brake fluid with some high temp racing fluid. The reason why we were trying to get the ducting done is the first track day I did, 
I was cooking the brakes after three or four laps at the firm. It is a heavy braking zone track, but it was happening often. And I think I did at least boil the fluid once and the pedal got a little mushy and it's, it's something we need to resolve. They need to be bled anyway to get the air out from boiling them. But then also we need to put some higher temp fluid so we don't have to worry about that happening in the future. So bleeding brakes is always a difficult process. It's always hard to tell if you got all the air out or you did it right. And it gets even more complex on these newer cars because you have an ABS pump that you've got to push fluid through. So I decided to finally buy one of these pressure bleeders. So this is forcing pressure in from the top and basically pushing the fluid out. Instead of vacuuming it out or you're pushing it out with the pedal, it's creating positive pressure and pushing the old fluid out while putting new fluid in. So we tried it out and it worked absolutely perfect for this scenario to basically push all the old fluid out. And once it cleared up, we know it's good new fluid close the valve, move on to the next one. So we got all the fluid swapped out and then we could go ahead with the final touches of putting on the bracing back on, putting all the wheels back on, doing everything we need to do to get this thing ready to go, get it off the lift and call it done and dusted officially. Dude, taking this thing like an F80 literally what, completely apart with the sign. It's everything but pulling the engine out. It's the only thing we haven't done. Full Let's train, the entire no train. or interior chassis. Or yes. interior wiring. But we did do interior stuff, because we have those, like, definitely the seats in the other car. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's not much we haven't touched on an F80, which is pretty hilarious, all things considered. <laughs> this MHG setup is the same thing we used on the other car. Um, Jordan was nice enough to send me two of these wireless deals and then I just had to buy the license, which I did. Uh, I like it. On the other car, right, we're gonna, we can flash the car over Wi-Fi, which is pretty cool. So let's get it installed. I just don't even remember how I connected it last time. That's what it looks like out in the sunlight. You can see the light glistening off the carbon. Boom, so satisfying. So we got it tuned, let it warm up, and then we'll go take it for, uh, for a little rip in Mexico and just see what she feels like now. It felt pretty fast stock. Like, it would spin the tires in second. You know, if you stabbed it in first, you could row through third with the tire spinning. So I'm excited to see what it feels like on a stage two tune. I didn't go to stage two plus, kept it at stage two. But we do have the crank up, so hopefully we're all right. Let her rip.